What's up, it's Chanel. Welcome to a new episode of Vital Vinyl Vlog. Today we're going to be listening to South Carolina, to Philly Transplants, Horrendous, their debut record, The Chills on Dark Descent Records. These guys are doing Philadelphia proud in the death metal scene, and it fucking rules. And I love this album, just killer Swedish influenced death metal from the hostile city. It's just great stuff. I mean, nowadays, uh, they kind of have advanced the Swedish death into a more, like, human error death mixed with, like, entombed and dismember and grave. It's amazing. Like, if you heard the latest uh, horrendous record or have caught them live or heard their, um, the, um, single they put out in 2015 I think it's just amazing shit it might have been 2016 I forget but that was a killer fucking song and horrendous rules but I know that they're not originally from Philadelphia but I wanted to review some Philly death metal and um, today we're gonna go over Gorophobia's Complimation Vile Beast of Abomination on Dark Descent Records. It seems like everything's from Dark Descent Records because they fucking rule. I'm sorry. They just do. Matt's the man. He puts out cool ass shit. This is on this real neat splatter. It's sick. It's a compilation. I'll go over what what's what, but this is just some serious, you know, old school, old school, deep underground fucking death metal. Awesome artwork on this whole reissue, re-release. Well, compilation, I don't even know what to really throw all this under because somebody took the time to make this sound as fucking phenomenal as it does. And also, I guess I can see where um, my friends in uh, another Philly death metal band, Polterchrist, got their band name from, or maybe vice versa. I probably should have hit up Brian about this, but he'll see the video, or at least see me showing the record, and if I have any mistakes, Brian, hit up below and uh, I'll also put a link to the new Polter Christ album uh, they just released a new one it's fucking badass again really really underground Philly death metal and it's awesome if you're a fan of Gorophobia then fuck yeah you'll you'll love this stuff so you have Polter Christ Entrapment Devious Regregation Organ Donor Demented Omen of Machicism Morbius Pathology, Cremate and Hate, Wraith Reaper, Chronic Blood Larva, and Creator Chaos. Now, a couple years back, I remember uh, Gorophobia was playing a bunch of shows at this local bar, like with uh, my friend's band, Her Virgin Womb, at the time. Uh, and uh, R.I.P. to that project. Um, my one buddy went from that to a band you guys might know that are on Severed Records, the Gertrick Tree. Um, they're like slamming death metal, but uh, Rob Holt, who does vocals, is a good friend of mine, and he has some sick gutturals. So if you're into that type of like you know brutal death metal, definitely check out the Gertrick Tree. But I'm gonna read you this. Um, from Birth AD's Jeff Tandy. I'm gonna read you this little write-up he did about Gorophobia, because it's really badass. Gorophobia changed my life. It was their first ever tour of immolation that was to blame. They came to San Antonio near the end of July 1992, the day before my birthday. I hadn't heard of Gorophobia, but the guys in immolation assured me that they were something to see. Back then, any band from the nefarious realms of the East Coast were regarded as a big deal to some young Southerners like myself. Hell, these guys were from Philadelphia. Did they even have a scene? No matter. 
They might as well have been invading conquistadors with their angular guitars, spiked leather, and black on black stage attire. Death metal below the Mason Dixon line was still all about blue jeans at that point. The venue was a small beloved dump of a place and the stage was low to the floor. There weren't a lot of people in attendance yet despite feeling intimidated, I stood up front to check out the threatening looking group as they tore into their set. I realized that it was evil death metal standing before me. Gorophobia was indeed the real thing. Chris was all hair and teeth as he hammered his bass and ground up a ferocity that matched the best moments of Morbid Angel. While Gorophobia banged their heads with martial force throughout, they were making a statement. The music was fast and mean. There were just enough twists and turns to make it elderic and visceral. There was no grandstanding or flashiness, just sheer black energy gripping the room from start to finish. Fuck yeah. These songs were brand new to me, but they stuck like bullets inside my head, including the unreleased track, Necropolis Offering. I'm still waiting to hear it on records 20 year and counting. That night I became a Gorophobia fan. It was exciting because while everyone was rightfully talking about immolation, this Philly foursome lurked in an even darker shadows. Before long their willfully strange name became a password for dedicated fans in a death metal underground. The following evening in Houston, I was lucky enough to open, the, open for the tour as part of a friend's band. It was a much bigger show with a maniac crowd. Certainly the biggest I'd ever seen from the stage. It was also the night I turned 18 and decided to play metal for the rest of my life. A lot of things have changed since then. Gorephobia never broke out into a bigger label like many of their contemporaries and their output was spare. The demos in 7, in seven inches ended up being a legendary epitaph to the unrealized potential, which is a story of many bands who proved influential long after their demise. Against all expectations, the band reformed and returned to Texas once more, just 10 days short of a 17 year absence. They still had the obscure and insidious gleam which captivated me so many years before. It was exciting to be transported back to a time before I knew them on a first name basis. To that night when I was scared to stand too close to the front. If this compilation is your first exposure to the band, then welcome to the cult. The rest of us will acquire it with the knowledge that agoraphobia is still our password. A key to the unrealm I mean, the, a key to the unnamed realm of darkness and chaos. After all these years, they're still of one of death metal's secret weapons. The band from Philadelphia who dared to exist in a town that couldn't care less. They were outsiders and the underdogs. The metallions who stand alone. They were what death metal was all about. Now that makes me fucking proud to be a Philadelphia death metal fan, seriously. And it makes me even happier to support something like Gorophobia, like something as important as this to the death metal scene, community, and history. The fact that a lot of bands existed in this time period from the East Coast, where record labels kind of like, you know, put their nose up in the air because it was too extreme. It was too fucking brutal. And they weren't willing to change their stylings for a record label. And that's awesome. Like it seriously is. Like a lot of bands like Incantation, Mortician ended up getting, you know, picked up by Relapse and whatnot. And you know, it lasted for a long time and it's awesome to see Incantation back at home on Relapse Records. But there were so many other bands in the scene, like my cousin played in Hearse. If you want to check out some killer, like Death Doom, check out Hearse's 1992 demo. My cousin, the Black Lord of Crucifixion, does vocals and drums. Killer stuff, and same thing with like Early Crucifier, 
you know, it's just killer shit that, you know, you don't really hear too much about. And same thing with Poltergeist. Like, Poltergeist is awesome. And speaking of which, the songs on this compilation, which, like I said, I really wish I knew where the war room was and who John Lakiko is, but uh, I guess it's infernalcreations.net. This is mixed and mastered so fucking good. Like, if you're a death or black metal band or, you know, any type of extreme metal band from Philadelphia, if you aren't going to Creep Records to do your shit, I would hit up, um, you know, this uh, infernalcreations.net because when you guys hear these songs you're gonna be like what the fuck that was recorded in 1990 are you serious and yeah so um you have the morbidius pathology demo seven inch recorded in 1990 snug fit studios produced by agoraphobia lineup chris gamble and bass and vocals alex box lead and rhythm guitars and craig samilski on drums and then we have the Oman of Machoism 7 inch recorded 1991 at Obliteration Studios. Produced by Gorephobia, lineup Chris Gamble, bass and vocals, Alex Brokas, lead and rhythm guitars, John Acrucci, guitars, Ken Masterla, drums, Vile Beast recorded 2004, Braun Street Studios, lineup Chris Gamble, bass vocals, Alex Bakas. Lead and rhythm guitars and Craig Somolsky drums and this was mastered at the war room like I was saying and it's just fucking so goddamn good like seriously and there's um not lyrics to every single track but you have lyrics to um you got cremating I'm pretty sure this is just the B side well, okay, you get just the lyrics to certain songs. So, I guess, you know, songs that they still have the lyrics lying around for, you get. But, like, I'll read the Polter Christ Entrapment lyrics. Phantom Force to beckon a savage omen, asylum and mortal man, outbreak the elements of demonology, transgressive discovery, resurrected grueling terror, the guilty must be punished, shocking transmission, incantation in its deranged form, molesting gas cause blistering throbisms, affect chakra waves of intervenal reaper. Psychosis, damnation, monstrous defection, enraged maniacs, lust to infect, morbid slaughterization, life force is dismount from your ugly flesh coffin, advanced mummified soul, revolting feed, demon, accidents, psychoneurosis, atheist of the Catholic Messiah, spiritualism, interrogate our horrible tribulation. Neophobia, dread of their gruesome, bloodthirsty revenge, welcome divine unknown guest, Polter Christ entrapment, merciless scream after scream, reigned by the darkest one, supernatural depths of terror, baptized through possession, it's licensed to punish the spawn of man's demon. Fuck yeah. Awesome stuff, and if you're just a fan of old school death metal in general, you're gonna love this, but if you're a fan of like early incantation, you can hear hints of that. There's a lot of early, you know, 90s East Coast death metal influences on here. This is not your fucking, you know, More Sound Studios. This is not your Scott Burns death metal. This is the true, pure, you know, black underground and it's fucking killer shit. Like, this could come out today and still probably make Decibel's album of the year list, as well as a lot of death metal fans' album of the year list. Like, and the fact that it's a compilation, it's just, it boggles my fucking mind. This is so goddamn good. The riffs, the vocals, everything about this is a 
fucking, it, it's amazing. It's death metal essential shit from Philadelphia. Thanks for watching.